Okay, uh, good morning once again. Welcome to the Youth Ministry course. Uh, good to see you. Oh, you all are doing well, as always. Um, right, let's continue uh, where we left off. In the last class, we covered Chapter 5, uh, the challenges in youth ministry. Uh, in, that, in this chapter, we were looking at challenges uh, that are faced by the youth pastors, youth leaders, um, and also the second half will be focused on the challenges that the youth uh, themselves face or they go through, okay? Um, so some of the pointers that we looked at or the challenges that the youth leaders or the youth pastors face uh, in the last class we looked at was one of the things is impatience. Uh, right, so they want immediate results, um, or they want to bring about changes immediately, and uh, and if that doesn't happen, they get impatient and they end up quitting uh, prematurely. All right, so we looked at uh, approaching this uh, as a marathon race compared to a hundred meters dash, like a hundred meter sprint. Okay, so train yourself, equip yourself to be like a marathon runner to uh, to run this race with faithfulness, with perseverance, uh, right? To keep at it, okay. And the other challenge that a youth leader faces is time management. So if if the time is not managed well, uh, then you know if you don't manage your time, your time will be managed for you by other people. So learning to say no was one of the uh, important points that we looked at um, and we also looked at a book suggestion by Cal Newport called Deep Work uh, I would suggest you to go through that another challenge a uh, very real challenge that a youth leader faces is discouragement and we saw a list of things uh, that can be uh, that th which can be reasons to uh, that will lead to discouragement, like lack of respect and criticism and uh, discouraging emails and whatnot. Um, right, so those are all, and and a couple of other things uh, is com communication and intimacy with God, um, because as a leader, as a pastor in full time ministry or part time whatever, uh, if things if things can get busy and whatnot and that could actually affect your walk with god your intimate relationship with god and so the more busier you get doing the work of god don't forget who you're working for and making sure that you ha you walk uh you know your relationship with 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 god is strong um okay so and those were some of the things that we looked at in the last class uh, in this session very briefly again we look at um, some of the challenges that our young people face okay um, what what are some of the challenges uh, that a young generation a youth of this generation of this day and age um, are going through okay um, so one of the things uh, which has been a huge topic and also over the during the pandemic as well has been the topic of mental health um, and it's uh, the numbers are uh, very uh, scary I just didn't want to throw numbers at us but then um, it's doubled and tripled in number during the pandemic of how many young people have been affected by mental health um, it's uh, Okay, so, uh, and yeah, they, they are facing incredible challenges in their day-to-day -day life every day, right? And so, um, and especially when we talk about this generation, uh, you know, they experience change more often uh, than the youth or the teens from 40 years ago. Uh, so there was a survey that said from the 19th century, from 1900s to the 1990s, right? That's about 90 years, right? From the 1900s to the 1990s, um, the the number of change the people from that uh, era would have seen is maximum say five or six changes like drastic changes five or six drastic changes and just from the 1990s till now uh, and that i mean that, that that number has just gone off the roof and now we know that uh there's a we experience change on a daily basis uh, on a regular basis and uh and that also has had an effect uh, on on the youth, on the young, you know. And so, I mean, how many times have we had uh, our parents or our grandparents tell us, you know, in our days it was not like this. In our days it was more peaceful. Has anybody else had that? <laughs> that do you? 
you know uh, in our days 50 paisa was so valuable 100 rupees was like 1000 rupees in our day. yeah uh, so yeah i mean if you've been if you've even heard that you know what i'm talking about right so uh, the days are different the times are different uh, the challenges that the teens and the youth face today are very different from the challenges that uh, you know the teens and the youth that faced 40 years ago which is obvious isn't it everything changes in time um so yeah mental health was uh is like right on top of the list of challenges that the young people faces um in this day and age and again various various uh, factors uh, reasons factor into that right like for example uh i mean stress leads to mental health like and the reasons that can cause it is uh, life choices uh, academic achievements, the need to accomplish. Uh, I mean, guys, I'll be the first one to say uh, the generation today are so advanced. Uh, and I'm like, when I was about their age, I, I say this as a joke, you know, I used to play marbles or play in the mud or something. <laughs> Uh, but some of the things that these guys talk nowadays is absolutely scary, you know, and they talk about ambitions and academic achievements. And I'm like, what was I doing? Uh, you know, um, oh, I was sorry, I was busy trying to live life or something. <laughs> I'm scared. Uh, but it's just it's absolutely crazy, right? Uh, and the, I mean, the life choices uh, that, that they have to take, um, I mean, have you ever tried to make a choice or choose something anything in nowadays like in, in i'm not that old okay but then just going 15 years back um you know this is for example uh even choosing a bike adds to their stress level uh, i mean having a conversation with some of the young people is just absolutely crazy you know uh for example in my days uh, there were like three important bikes like major bikes that a student wanted to buy in you know and uh, I don't want to mention the names. Okay, a TVS, um, Pulsar, or something. Just three other bikes. Uh, maybe the Bullet, you know, the Royal Enfield or something like that. So there were three or just a handful of bikes to choose from. And, you know, choosing was easy. Yeah, Yamaha. <laughs> Yay. Uh, is it so easy? And now you have like a hundred or more different bikes to choose from. This is just an example, guys, okay? And they're like, okay, which one do I choose? And just doing researches and whatnot. And again, same example could be used for mobile phones, isn't it? Um, Nokia double one double zero was like the boss. You could kill a person with that phone. <laughs> okay, you hear, which one you want to buy? Okay, Nokia and just different models from that. Uh, but then, gosh, now uh, you want to choose a phone. Uh, it just adds to the stress level right i think it's not just for young people but then you know it's just an example and just the life choices are there so much so many to this generation to choose from and that adds to their stress level because they want to please themselves they want to prove themselves right and and you know to their parents and etc etc you know like do they want to be an entrepreneur or employee entrepreneur I, I, guys again I, I didn't even know the word like that existed okay like until a couple of years ago <laughs> and uh and so you can imagine you know i do i want to become an entrepreneur or employee which career path which college school blah 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 and you know and so that's one of the things life choices adds to their stress levels and uh you know affects their mental strength uh, health and uh and again loneliness is another big deal uh in this day and age and uh and uh, you are part of a group you can be connected you know uh you know uh, online you can this is the most connected generation and and at the same time the disconnect the most disconnected generation uh that's you know and that's what the studies also say the most connected and yet disconnected generation Okay, and that has led to this uh, loneliness, which affects the mental health of the youth in this day and age. Right, so in a group, they are part of a group, but feels left out and alone, uh, and they and so they, you know, stays away because socially they are not accepted, or, or they have the fear of being rejected, uh, and follows the trend to be wannabe, 
uh, and you know trends. Uh, we'll talk a lot about trends in in you know in the next chapter in detail, not so in detail, but uh, yeah. So, so the factors of being uh, the fear of being rejected uh, and uh, the fear of not being accepted uh, or being looked at differently, uh, you know, adds to their mental health. Uh, and so because they don't want to be rejected and they want to be accepted they will you know um, they will do what those what their peers are asking them to do and it comes into the topic of peer pressure but uh, and that's a whole study in itself but yeah and so they're given to peer pressure and um, and that eventually kind of leads to loneliness and hurt and that turns into hidden rebellion and whatnot. So again, all of this is part of mental health. And um, and the need, and that, again, it's kind of correlated. Most of these points are correlated. It's just interwoven between, it's just so complicated, it's so interwoven. Uh, and because they feel lonely and uh, and they don't want to be seen as that, as well at the same time and so they they see the need or feel the need to show themselves that they are happy all the time right they are happy all the time uh, I mean if you were to do a survey or take a percentage of the number of happy posts on Instagram or Facebook uh, if Facebook is still cool uh, you know the percentage of all the happy posts would be so significantly higher uh, than a sad post very very rarely you would see someone with a very sad display picture dp or a very sad you know status um having a bad day or whatnot um you know it's it's all about oh you know i'm vacationing in this place um this is amazing that is amazing my life is amazing i look great i feel great uh i'm doing so many things i'm an influencer and blah 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 uh you get i are you with me you get what i'm saying right so uh, always partying um you know it's just the most amazing display picture ever you can add some more layers and uh you know artificial makeup to make it look very different um but yeah so it's just and all of this is with is related in wanting to be accepted and the fear of being rejected and then so they kind of manufacture happiness um, right okay uh, are you all with me get a are you able to relate or follow what's happening yeah anything you want to add to this couple of points that we've just discussed uh, Okay. Right. Yeah. Comparison to yes. Yeah. Thanks to say for adding that. Yeah. Uh, that's huge, isn't it? Um, yeah. Uh, again, <laughs> you just take the topic of comparison, and we can just talk for a couple of hours on that. Uh, so yeah, it's and it, it's just, it's same goes with any of these points that we're talking about, right? You can just talk about loneliness for a half a day, uh, you know, and the way everything that they are, you know, going through. And uh, and you can talk about mental health for you can have two days seminar on it uh, itself or, or more. Um, so yeah, uh, okay, yeah, great. Then let's um, see where we go with this. Uh, but uh, I mean, but Ed, the, the, Ed, any of you relate to the choices? Uh, you know, the affecting their mental health. Uh, the, the the list of choices or the life choices or the academic achievements that uh, you know that the young generation have to deal with uh, nowadays. Does anybody has have had any conversation with young people? Uh, yes, Sai, go ahead. Um, I I think to a large extent, and I'm not saying this for all the the younger generation, is that the upbringing has a has a role to to why we have the huge numbers of mental health issues. Yeah. Um, yeah. Or bringing the sense that 
I think the earlier generation, the way we were kind of raised, um, not harsh, not in a harsh condition, but you were you were you were taught how to man up, you were taught how to bear with conditions. Yeah. You were, you know, those 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 opportunities to handle difficult situations were there. Yeah. Whereas a lot of things have been made so easy. Yeah. And so just a, a change in that condition can spiral a lot of effects that yeah, lead yeah. to mental health issues. Yeah. So I think, I think upbringing has played a huge That's role true. in the numbers that we see today in terms of mental health issues. That said, it's not something yeah. we should pack aside and and blame it on that but i just think yeah that that also has to be looked at for us to have a holistic solution yep. in ensuring that we can drop these numbers as generations progress correct yeah that's correct yeah so yeah upbringing is definitely one of the major influences uh, i think i'd like to put it that way um yeah and then because there are also so many other influence uh, factors that influence uh, the younger generation, but then yeah, absolutely spot on. Uh, and I think it's it, it's not like you know our generation did not go through depression or loneliness and whatnot, right? I'm sure all of us at some point in time have felt lonely, uh, and uh, I I know I have felt lonely. I know I have been depressed. I have, I have struggled with mental health, just that I didn't know the words called loneliness and dep depression or mental health even existed. I didn't know that's what I was going through. But then, uh, yeah, it, it was like, OK, such is life. This is life. Just move on with it. It is what it is. You know, <laughs> uh, just get up and go on. Um, but uh, yeah, so uh, anything else? Anyone else uh, want to add? Uh, Pastor, our time, the only stress we had was on the day of result. <laughs> yes. When parents would go to school and get the result. Otherwise, there was no stress at all. Yeah. We had everything around us uh, better. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that was stressful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tarun, uh, anything that you want to add uh, as in to the, some of these points? I don't know why I feel like asking. Uh, no, I, I I totally agree to what I was saying. Um, uh, I could very well relate to the uh, everything, like types of bikes and the amount of yeah. things we did. They were all so simple, like, you know, marbles, flying kites. That's yeah. my childhood. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And nowadays, in fact, when I speak to the teenagers, uh, they tell me social media apps that I have never heard about. Yeah. Uh, like, oh, do they exist? What do they do? Like, how is it different from Facebook? They have so many things that they are yeah, members yeah. of. Yeah, it's it's so different, yeah. yes. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Sarah. Thanks for sharing. Yeah, it's absolutely scary. I mean, I, I, can't, I'm, I, I can't tell you how scared I am just interacting with some of the kids in the apartment. You know, they are in fifth standard, sixth grades. Uh, some of the things that they talk about and know about, um, like, uh, just move on, like, <laughs> you know. Uh, so yeah, I mean, the challenges are real, but uh, let's just talk about some more challenges. Uh, and uh, yeah, so another challenge uh, that adds to you know everything that they're going through is time. Um, and and with time is uh, so they are super busy. Um, you know, they are incredibly busy in everything that they're doing right now. Uh, I mean, with the the way the schools function or add, you know. Get them to do things and also extracurricular activities. Uh, sometimes that and 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 there are times where they don't really have a choice uh, when it comes to teenagers and also you know like what Sai mentioned, uh, you know, it, the the parents want to just put them in so many different things you know at the same time, um, and so they don't have the time. So they go to they go to college, they come back, they have. I don't know swimming lessons, music lessons, dancing lessons. Uh, skating lessons what else you know football coaching hockey coaching basketball coaching and the the list can go on uh, it, and 24 hours is not enough and so and 
and because they're coming from that kind of an experience uh you know and they and they they reach a point where they get to choose what they really want to do and so they like to see that okay what i am doing is there worth in what i am doing uh, is there worth in what i am doing and so uh and when you come to put it in context for a youth meeting uh, immediately, by default, the question they ask themselves is, do they see, uh, you know, that this meeting is worth their time? Is it worthwhile? Right? And so, I mean, they ask this question in the, in the, in for good reasons and also for the bad reasons. Because if they don't see that this is going to help them or interest them or please them, uh, they're going to see value in their time in every other places and that's not necessarily good right and so some other places that they will begin to look at is uh, you know when it comes to the topics of say sexuality and topics of that or identity uh, I mean sexuality and identity is again another challenge that I, I don't think we really need to talk about it and we just know that uh, the world is not going the right <laughs> Uh, you know, in terms of the pronouns and everything that is happening, the woke generate, uh, you know, culture that is moving across the world, and also the, uh, the LGBTQ and all of that, uh, it's just uh, absolutely scary. And so, and they don't mind getting into topics like that and talking about all of that, uh, and um, right, so sexuality, identity, and also the absence. Uh, of a parent figure it could be the father or the mother they, they might come from a broken family or they can come from a family that where they've experienced constant violence and abuse uh, and uh, and some of these counselors who deal with abuse say there are 100 different kinds of abuse uh, that they can talk about and so we don't know what exactly that they are traumatized by Right, so an absent of a parent figure adds to that. And if as if all of that was not enough, there is the media, the negative influence of the media that is constantly like, you know, these big billboards on the highways are just screaming at you. Uh, metaphorically speaking, like everything on, it could be on the news or advertisements or social media ads on, and all the different platforms are like these billboards screaming at you, asking you these questions or saying that, you, you know, to be worthwhile, you must be beautiful, uh, to avoid pain and pursue pleasure at all cost. Uh, right. Pain is, uh, they don't understand the idea of pain. They don't like the idea of pain. And as soon as they experience something about it, they don't think about avoiding it. They they succumb to it, kind of a thing, you know. And so they pursue pleasure at all cost. And most of the times, they don't know what it's costing them. A certain pleasures that they are pursuing, and f sex has become a recre recreational pursuit. Right? There are they think that there are no consequences to it and everybody does it so it's okay um so we've come to this point and i'm not talking only about the west i'm talking about our my country here generation here in india uh, right so it's gotten to that point uh, and uh, you know violence and vengeance is an acceptable way to deal with your problems um and then the pursuit of uh you know the ideology of money brings happiness is everywhere so the negative media influence and an over dependency on technology um, right? and so this is this statement was given in the u.s for their you know the youth they call it the society calls them the ice generation which is the internet and cellular uh generation uh the ice generation right just uh, the instant access to information at their fingertips uh is is incredible it's not just information that is available at their uh, fingertips it's um, information that is not necessary for them uh, and you know you you know what I'm talking about uh, the pornographic content or or any content or any resource and you can uh, you know you can become a doctor by you know just reading a few pointers on Google 
you think you know what is good for yourself uh you know i mean as it is in my youth days i thought you know it's something about the, that phase you think you are the right person you, you know the most right person in the world and everybody else is wrong no matter what they say you are always right and we didn't even have a lot of information back then and imagine with all the knowledge and information that's just present and available uh you know the reason for them to think that they are right is is just magnified it's simply because of uh their reach to the technology and information that is available um you know i was actually having this conversation with a, uh with an associate pastor yesterday I was saying that you know in the mid 2000s uh you know, before google became famous and whatnot uh, as a worship leader you know i I would put on the cassette or a CD, which was just becoming popular then. Uh, to learn a song, I would put on the cassette, play the song, sit there close to the tape recorder. You know, if I hope you all know what a tape recorder is, right? Uh, sit with it, play the song. Okay, learn the song. Okay, identify by listening to it. Okay, is this the is this the right chord? What's happening? And that's how we learned a song. Play the song, stop it, rewind it, forward it, and the tape would get spoiled. Um, uh, but now uh, the chords. Okay, I want the chords for so and so song. It's just available like that, and and uh, and how that the availability of such resources, which is fine, it's easy, has affected the skill level of musicians these days. Is um, that their years is not as good as you know it should be. Uh, a year having a good year for a musician is everything. Um, right, so, and how, and we can see like like a dip in the musicianship uh, these days because it's not challenging and because they don't have to put an effort to learn a song that that you know that trains their ear to uh, hear well. Um, right, so these are all just uh, different challenges that's uh, you know that's affecting our young people in this day and age from. The mental health and be feeling lonely and the need to show happy, uh, show show themselves happy all the time and and that they are super busy and because of which. They need to, because uh, they can search for all the, the things that they think is worthwhile in the wrong places like you know sexuality identity. Um, you know the negative influence of the media and technology, etc. But the the point of understanding all of this is not just to show that they're you know what the challenges that they are going through, because knowing the challenges alone is not enough. It's a starting place, right? So knowing the challenges alone is not enough because it's a starting place. It's a good place to start. We know what they are going through. We know this is what their challenges are. And so now, as a youth leader, uh, you know we must prayerfully work on finding practical and biblical solutions, right? And so, how we can help them, how we can empower them, uh, and you know how we can talk about uh, their God-given identity and tell them that they are beautiful as they are, you know, that they are worth it as they are, because God created them and they were made in the image of God, right? And so. You today must not only be taught God's word, they must be mentored and discipled in ways to apply the word to their lives. Just preaching to them is not good enough. Uh, they need to be uh, mentored, you need to walk along with them and teach them how to apply the word in their lives. Right, and so um, as a conclusion of this chapter, uh, you know, I've just put together some of the topics that can be covered uh, in the youth ministry, right? And so just some of the topics are identity. Uh, you know, there's an APC publication on identity that you can use uh, foundations, um, again, another APC publication called you No know, Gossip. Um, sexual purity is another important topic. Uh, if, if the church doesn't talk about sex, um, every information that our youth are getting ab uh, about sex is from the media. It's from the world, and so uh, and 
I, I, I don't see any reason as to why the church should not talk about sex. I, I, I don't see why we don't talk about it enough, uh, but we should, uh, you know, sexual pu uh, purity, overcoming sexual sin, as sex as God's idea, uh, right? Overcoming uh, as a topic in different uh, subtopics, like how do you overcome depression, overcoming anxiety, overcoming fear, overcoming addiction, temptations, emotions that destroy like anger, um, you know, and then peer pressure, overcoming all these subtopics, um, intimacy with God, their daily walk with God, worship as a lifestyle, salvation, and just a little bit of uh, slightly theology heavy uh, subjects are important as well, like Trinity and salvation, baptism of the Holy Spirit, uh, and uh, lifestyle evangelism, discipleship, and you know, the list can go on prayer, word, how to read the word, how to study the word. Uh, basics of apologetics, uh, love and relationships, uh, etc. And the list can go on, but this is just some of the topics that we've managed to cover uh, at my time at APC, and, and the list can go on. Um, and so, um, yeah, just pausing here for a minute and understand, knowing that the cha just knowing the challenges of the youth that are uh, challenges that the youth are facing this day is not enough. Uh, you know, that's the starting place, but we need to just prayerfully go before God and seek His wisdom and His guidance as to how we can equip and empower and disciple our young people in this uh, generation. Right. So, uh, any questions or thoughts at this time? Okay. All right. So, uh, uh, yes, Taisha, go ahead. Good morning, Pastor. Good morning, everyone. Um, it's not necessarily a question per se. I just wanted to to just echo what you're saying. It's so true, and um, it's so right. Among the young people, what they're learning is from the world, and the, sometimes the church is so kosher about certain topics um as if they're free to talk about it but yet still they're learning these things um in school and from friends and from watching videos and negative influences while the church should be taking this on and leading from the forefront and showing you know what is god's stance point on this yeah. and also emulate they have good and godly marriages let people emulate yeah. that not let yeah. the world tell them it's okay to do this and it's okay to do that and then when they're broken, broken, they run to the church. And then we have to be yeah. cleaning up the messes. So yeah. it, it is so true. Yeah. Thank you, Taisha. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I just wanted to, I think uh, we need to just discuss a little bit more about just the challenges and uh, what some of the challenges that you've seen. Uh, you can add on to what we've just learned because uh, I think everybody sharing some of their, your views will also help each other, help me at least. Oh, so uh, yeah, just like Taisha shared, anything that you've observed, feel free to unmute and uh, uh, speak. Sorry, if I may um, go again, seeing nobody else has raised their hand. So the challenges that I am seeing amongst young people um, now in my country I've seen it with my own two eyes. This young lady, there's this drug that they call Mali. I'm not sure if you guys are familiar about it, but it's now raving among the young people. It's as if they like the high, but it, this eye allows mm. them to hallucinate. It's as if they're seeing monsters. They're seeing right. all, and they think it's funny, but it's actually rather dangerous, you know? Right. They're attacking right. the 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 the... The, the police officers and all of this and think the gun is actually fake, but it's actually real when they take these things. So I actually okay. saw a young lady. I was in my brother's barber shop and she walked in and I saw the young men, they were laughing, but I was mm. looking at her and said, she didn't look too all together. But then mm. they were like, someone needs to take her home because they knew what she took because she was coming from a rave. And okay. then she started wanting to take off her clothes right there in the streets you know, to right. jump the guys. I'm like, oh my gosh, really? Right. So the, and they think it's fun. So you find some young girls, they end up in hospital 
they have some kind of std they don't know how they don't know they're raped they don't know what happened because they right. take this thing and their friends are trying it. it's good and you know they um yeah. paint this picture as if it's oh you're just gonna see you know all kind of things and your mind is just gonna you, you're gonna take your pressure off you yeah. from your mom stressing you or whatever it, it paints yeah. this picture giving them freedom but it's really yeah. um wrecking their lives that's what i'm seeing some of the challenge yeah. the challenges i'm seeing with the drugs now even in schools and happening in my country okay yeah thank you Taisha. thank you for sharing that yeah, yeah. Uh, yes, Christopher, go ahead. Yeah, so you know, just I guess um, I mean I'm just running through all these some of these challenges, and uh, uh, I think in some some way or the other, uh, in, a, in an urban context, uh, I think you know there have been uh, you know challenges uh, faced by by the youth um, uh, for for some years now, um, particularly may, maybe sometimes with the influence of the West. And um, I mean, even in you know when I was in college um, some years back, uh, I mean, I think a lot of these challenges were were there. Uh, but I think one fundamental difference is that um, is the is the speed and uh, you know the rate of information that uh, that is coming mm. to to the to the youth uh, yeah. and to us also. I mean, you know, we uh, we as uh, you know adults also you know see yes. this, um, you know, can can uh, can see this also. Correct and. There is a, uh, you know, I think it's, it's the rate, the speed, the, um, the, 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 the good, the good, good. I mean, the, grass, the some of the, some of the advantages of that is also that you know you are, you are, you know, you get this information, you can even get a whole host of, yeah. uh, you know, topics covered. But I think on on the on the on the downside is a lot of uh, things around uh, misin misinformation, yeah. uh, a lot of uh, you know bad influences. Uh, which are which are which are happening very fast and um, and at, uh, when I mean very fast I mean at you know at lightning speed and you know you can and you can access that information and the youth are access, access, accessing that information so yeah. I think the challenge in in you know in, in my in my view is that you know that um, the uh, the amount of misinformation and the the the, yeah. uh, the information that is coming to uh, you know through technology, uh, which is which is a bad influence, is much more. Firstly, you know from you know the 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 actual you know quantum of it uh, yes. versus you know yeah. what is good. Uh, yeah. yeah, that's one. And the other thing is that the 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 you know the way the 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 information is coming and you know influencing people. Mm -hmm. the, the impact of it is, is much less and i mean traditionally you know there's a lot of you know uh you know uh, you know uh, messages that come you know in, in a very traditional way which the youth is with the youth are not you know they in a sense they are disregarding because right. it's it, there's no that not that level of stickiness there's not that level of you know you know actual uh you know uh, you know it's not attractive to them you know right. in, in the way that you know, uh, you know, uh, the, the bad influences are, are you know, actually getting them disseminated. So, I mean, if you look at a Twitter, you know, feed, and you know how, and if if someone's uh, reputation is getting uh, getting completely, uh, you know, tot and totally yeah. uh, nullified, uh, yeah. you'll see that you know that there's a lot uh, more. Um, uh, you know, I mean, the way it has been put across and how it is, you know, how it has been disseminated and. Uh, yeah. Uh, is much it's it's much more attracted to the, to to, uh, to how it you know the good good uh, good information is coming through yeah um because the good information is coming through in a, in a very in a much more traditional way yeah so uh, i mean yeah so that those are some of the points that i i just raised yeah. Yeah. yeah interesting yeah thanks christopher yeah thank you yeah Yeah, I think uh, yeah. Another uh, interesting thing of, about let's say comparison as well. We just talked about the need to show themselves happy, right? Is uh, um, the way that it affects mental health is, for example. Um, so, uh, say I keep portraying myself to be happy all the time, and you know, just going to this great places on vacation, and I'm constantly living my life on the road, traveling. Uh, it's what is happening, and so maybe what i'm 
portraying on social media can be true or false, right? And that also affects the other person who's looking at my profile and saying, okay, you know, wow, look at this person. They are always amazing, happy, and, you know, going to these amazing places. Why does my life, uh, you know, why is my life like this? And so that is another way that leads to uh, affecting their mental health. They think, okay, their life is useless. Their life is worthless because, um, you know, because they don't get to live a life that it, that they are seeing on uh, you know Instagram or whatever. Uh, you get, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Um, um, anything else? Anyone wants to share? Uh, you know, like some of the challenges that you have seen that the youth are also facing. Nisha Harrison. Uh, Hupa shared, okay, they need someone to who accepts them without judgmental spirit. Yeah, available to listen and guide when they are ready. Yeah. Young people has become like handled with care fresh. Yeah. 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 Now please remember that uh, they did not come up with all these challenges for themselves or by themselves. Uh, you know what I'm saying? I'm just reminded of these scriptures from the Bible. And I think I've mentioned this before, you know, in Judges chapter 2. And again, it constantly says in the book of Judges is, uh, after, after this generation uh, arose another generation that did not know God. Uh, right? Um, it says, in, I forget which verse, but it says, in, I think in Judges chapter 2, just before, at the beginning or something, it says, after this generation, there, there arose another generation that did not know who this God was, what he had done for them. And so talking about God and teaching the next generation about our God and testifying about everything that he has done, uh, it come, it falls on us. Right. And then, you know, and if we do what we have to do, um, you know, then, you know, the, the list might decrease. <laughs> Not saying the challenges will completely erase, get erased, but then at least the list will kind of increase, decrease. Um, yeah, thank you, Avni. Uh, Abinas, uh, do you have, uh, I mean, from what you have observed, from, I mean, let's say from the place where you come from, um, is there anything that you have seen or observed the challenges that the youth uh, faced? Uh, Pastor, you are talking about my place? Yes, yeah. Um, uh, yes, Pastor, actually, the place where I belong, it's like, a, not like completely, educational area but it's like a mostly mm -hmm. people lives like uh their own life like it's like a village kind of thing so yeah yeah they don't know what to do what not to do and most of the people like even students like they're not able to take decision properly what they have to do next even i have a spirit i that's in challenges yeah. so mostly youths yeah, and they don't know the proper direction, like where to go, where not to go, what to do, what not to do. So right, okay. I've seen many past yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. Uh, I think, uh, so, I mean, again, I'm just continuing to develop the content as well for youth ministry and uh, for the most part because my audience were the youth from urban um, and I, uh, I have uh, you know, not studied enough on the challenges that a rural youth uh, face. And so I think I just want to go a little deeper on that. And um, yeah, if any of you can just look into that a little bit and uh, send me an email of some of the challenges that uh, the youths face in the rural area of, your, of the cities, um, that would be great for me to look into it as well. Okay. Uh, but yeah, well, uh, so we'll pause here. We'll continue with the next chapter in the next class. Um, you know, so thank you all for joining in. Uh, I guess take care. Have a lovely day. Ahead. I'll see you around. Thanks, guys. Bye.